In this episode of Velocity Philosophy, we are um, pleased to talk to Stephanie Mock from Mississippi State. Um, she's the Director of Olympic Sports Strength and Conditioning there. Um, before that, she worked at Clemson. Um, she was working with the Olympic Sports Strength and Conditioning Department. Um, uh, and just before Mississippi, she was the Assistant Director of Olympic Sports Strength and Conditioning. Um, she's worked with a lot of different athletes, um, as you can guess when talking about Olympic sports, but she's currently responsible for the supervision of the assistant strength coach, um, the grad assistants and volunteer interns. Um, but she's directly responsible for S and C for softball and volleyball, but she still has oversight of, of a wide variety of sports. Um, so she's worked in tennis, diving, golf, track and field comes up a lot during this chat soccer as well um yeah it, it would be amazing to be able to talk a little bit more and dive into, into those individual sports jay as always what should people be watching out for yeah well stephanie to me is someone that is utilizing the gym away system to its fullest potential um at mississippi state so she kind of talks about how she uses it for readiness you know uh increasing intent, motivation. She really likes the leaderboards. Um, but then she also does the reporting side of things. She's collecting all that data and she's making coaching decisions based off that. Um, I also thought it was interesting that her sort of take on things, she says it's her environment is um, athlete led, not coach fed. So it's kind of interesting to see how uh, at Mississippi State, they sort of introduce the technology and they actually, they, they want the students to lead the training sessions. They, they give them the iPads, they let them run the sessions, um, which a lot of the time you don't see. Uh, so that was pretty cool. But yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think just, yeah, that, that's pretty much it for me. Jim is um, well suited to that as well. Yeah. Um, I think <coughs> I, I was struck by <coughs> how easy she makes it all sound. I think we, we talk to um, coaches and they're, they're not really, or they haven't really dived in to gym wear enough to kind of get over uh, that learning curve. And then all of a sudden, yeah. it, I think it gets easy and it isn't complicated and it isn't technical. You get the bones in place and all of a sudden you can do reporting, testing, daily use, yeah, all different daily. types of zones, timings, um, leaderboards, and all of a sudden you're just getting, and I think the word was bang for your buck. With, with the word Stephanie used, like it's just, uh, there's heaps you can achieve with it. So that's something to listen out for as well. Um, but there's plenty in this one, plenty. So I think, I can can, um, what do you reckon, Jay? Let's go for it. All right, let's go. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for taking the time and shuffling things around a little bit to make time for us and with our Australian time zones. Um, we sort of got this theme and it comes from a question I'm really interested in and the theme of, of kicking these off. And it's asking coaches about where VBT became, like entered their awareness and their own education and when did they start coaching using velocity-based training? And the question's really about how did you go from learning VBT to being able to coach it like how did you build the expertise where did you learn where did you pick it up from and um, what were the first things you did with athletes definitely so my career started as a student athlete at West Virginia University and I was slightly exposed then that was like from 2009 to 2013 slightly exposed to just tendo units back then um, and I got into strength conditioning formally coaching with football at West Virginia with SNC and from West Virginia I went to Pitt and we were still utilizing tendos when I was at Pitt and that was still like 2013 going into 2014 I first um, really started to use the velocity based training as I got to Clemson University working under Rick Franz Blau um, and a lot of that came from working with track and field and especially in particular with working some, with some of that specialized strength and overlapping with the training that's going on on the track. So I think from an eye standpoint, when I got to Clemson working under him and understanding like that's when we started to bridge the gap of going from the Tendo unit, utilizing the gym wear unit. And it was fantastic in a sense of doing research for him of like making things relative to body weight 
So being able to put that information into the gym aware and get some of those outputs to take to the track and field coaches for mean power and things like that to help correlate some of those numbers and direct correlations to the track um, with some of the times that they're running and things like that. But I definitely say like we were starting to look into the work of uh, Ryan Mann, Dan Baker, Mladen into some of the research that they were doing um, so we could start to correlate and get understandings of some of the thresholds that we needed to set up for like percentage of 1RM for some of these different um, strength thresholds, whether it's like absolute strength, uh, accelerative strength, speed strength, strength speed, and then just like starting strength, just trying to get a, a ground base to build out for our program because I was working with Olympic sports there and we had 14 different Olympic sports. So yeah. understanding um, the drivers and the time of year for in season versus out of season and velocities we should be looking for within the training block. Um, we really relied on a lot of the research from those different professionals in the field. But um, yeah, as I got to Clemson, we purchased the gym warrior units way back then, like 2014, 2015. And I, right when they came out, we got our hands on like four of them and started utilizing them in a smaller um, group setting with some of the more upperclassmen student athletes that needed that specialized strength work. Um, and then as we saw um, what a great asset the gym wars were, we started to purchase more so we could outfit all of the racks um, because it was something that we wanted to be able to utilize with all the teams. Yeah, that's um, something that we're interested to maybe dive into if we get the time is the range of athletes that you work with. So we get to talk to team-based coaches, but they obviously, they, you know, they work with different positions and different types of athletes, but it's still within you know, football or hockey, but for yourself, um, you're just working with, with quite a, a different spread. Do you, do you mind just quickly touching on the different sports that you work with and the different athletes? Yeah, currently at Mississippi State, I'm working with um, volleyball and then softball, but then I have oversight over, we have nine different teams that trade out of our weight room. So with having nine different teams, um, finding the ways to implement the gym aware may look a little bit different. Like I think about with volleyball, um, we use it for like trap bar jumps, barbell jumps, um, looking at jump height throughout the season and readiness levels um, versus like with softball, we'll do some accommodating resistance pieces um, and looking at different thresholds of like decrement for um, selective hypertrophy, whether it's in season um, with like our juniors and seniors maybe on one plan versus our freshmen and sophomores maybe on a, another plan when it comes to rep ranges and percentage of decrement um, that we can utilize. So I think depending on not only training age, but the sport um, and what KPIs are for that, um, looking into how we're going to utilize it and then who does Olympic based movements, you know, uh, with track and field, I've been looking into a lot of whether I worked with them at Clemson for five years to still having a hand in all the different sports as the director at Mississippi state, um, just looking at athlete height, you know, um, and we created different charts for like the power claim, for example, of different velocities, peak velocity that we're going to look at for an athlete that is five, one to five, six versus an athlete that is five, seven to five, 11 um, versus an athlete, like a high jumper that would be like six foot to six, five or a volleyball player, um, creating different thresholds for them, of course, with like them having more time to accelerate the bar and things like that. Um, of course, because student athletes are extremely competitive and sometimes someone that's five foot, such as myself, I'm trying to move the barbell however fast on a clean. And then there's this six, three senorita over here that's moving it a lot faster. Like, why is that happening? And they're going to ask questions. So I think specializing the ranges, uh, depending on student athlete height was something that I worked with at Clemson and we created and then branched over to, um, as I went to Mississippi state, taking those charts and really. What we preach is just having a centralized playbook. So we have all these different charts that we utilize um, for the gym wear. And then with um, looking at, of course, like sport with like a soccer athlete that's a little more aerobic in nature and maybe not as explosive as a short sprinter, um, understanding whenever you're working through different phases, uh, the velocities may shift and things like that. So yeah, it's definitely a, a unique situation. I really enjoy being able to have my hand in a lot of different teams because um, you can experiment with, with some different things depending on the time of year, you know, in the summertime, whenever you have kids in and we're not in season, uh, trying to see what's going to work best. And also just like trying to set different benchmarks of like, all right, you've hit this level of strength, whether it's, you can squat two and a half times your body weight. Should we start shifting towards another, um, movement that could really help transfer onto the court of the field and using the gym aware to do that? Um, it's not a question. Just going back to the, the different heights and the different peak velocities, we could talk about that all day. Uh, it's something that comes up in the office because I'm 5'7". Jay's, what are you, Jay? Oh, no. Nah, I'm like six foot. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so um, that's something we're always going on about too. Because I'm like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm just as strong as you guys. I'm just not as tall. 
But anyway, I'll let uh, I'll let Jay carry on with it. Yeah. So those um, different velocity zones is that something you print out and put on the wall, or is it like a card that they ha- like? How do how do you sort of feed that information to them? Is it in like yes, a shop? thing. I was going to say one thing that I did whenever I got to Mississippi State because we didn't have gym wear prior to whenever I became the director at Mississippi State. Uh, we have like um, pretty much because we added a lot of different pieces of technology. Gym wear being one of them, of course. We we have like a whole entire booklet that we gave to our sport coaches of all the different pieces of technology we're adding and then how do we utilize them. So we put some of those charts within their actual binders um, so they understand some of these different strengths that we're working on throughout the times of the year. Um, so having those charts and it's something that we have like in our um, different offices and then we do take them out on the floor uh, for uh, recruiting visits so we can uh, get um, recruits to understand that like we're not going to work on the same thing year to year you know the the type of strength that we're going to work on we're going to progress it whether you're working from freshman to sophomore to junior to senior year it will look different your strength training we want to make sure that we're we're squeezing every ounce out of you like if you're a lemon we're, we're squeezing every drop mm-hmm. out of you in a sense of student athlete development so it's something that we have readily available to like our interns GAs of course our staff it's an understanding that like these are different thresholds to give guidelines, you know, um, and for them to understand, because luckily I've been exposed, like we were talking about it to a high level for a long period of time to a lot of different levels of athletes. Um, so having the eye for it, it is acquired over time. But uh, of course, the gym war definitely helps guide different pieces and um, and just all the numbers that it goes to the cloud based system. So creating some of those reports to send over to sport coaches. They love that, you know, relative to body weight or whatever thresholds they want to see. Um, they love the student athletes getting after it in the weight room, whether it's using like the leaderboards that we feed onto our flat screen TVs. Um, coaches want to see their kids compete and have high intent behind every rep and the gym war helps us do that. Yeah. Uh, oh, I was just, I was kind of jumping all over the place in terms of questions that we had, but um, I was just going to go back. So in terms of the different technology that you've used, you've obviously been exposed to uh, Tendo units as well, but are there any other systems that you've sort of um, had experience with or, used over over your years as a coach yeah so some of the different pieces that we added at mississippi state that i've been exposed to in particular at clemson with rick brands plow but um we kind of split our different pieces of technology up into three categories so like movement performance and then just energy system development so looking at all these different pieces of technology from like a, a diagnostic testing measurements to auto regulation and performance profiling to load management um, to athlete readiness and then data analytics. Um, and I think gym aware can fit under some of these different categories. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not just fixated to just one, um, but like some of the different pieces that we have from like a movement standpoint would be just like the nor board and the groin bar on um, the contact grid, looking at reactive strength index. Um, and then from a performance standpoint, possibly a little bit more of like our force X force plates and then even like, of course, we utilize the gym wear and then just from like an energy system development standpoint, uh, Polar Team Pro and then data analytics, um, Coach Me Plus, which yeah. gym wear is something that I knew coming into Mississippi State, uh, I wanted right away in a sense of it's something that we can use day to day, you know, with training and every single team. So you're getting your bang for your buck because they told me to prioritize like, all right, number one to 20 of technology that you can get. Um, you want to have something that one I know is reliable from me utilizing it at the past university, um, and then two, like every student athlete and every population can use it. Whether it's a tennis athlete to a track athlete to a baseball player, um, it's highly versatile. And depending on the movement that you want to use, and then just like I know my relationship with Gym Aware, they've been able to build out different like charts and things like that, and then also just being able to send some of those reports to sport coaches, whether it's one individual athlete or the whole entire team post-training session and being able to to keep track, especially in a time like now, um, now mm. being able to go back and reflect yeah. um, what were their uh, estimated 1RMs in the past, um, being able to have that objective data to go back and rely on. And I think it makes the student athletes like more comfortable that we do have that data because student athletes are always on their phone and collecting all this different information, whether it's like text, Instagram, all the above. Um, the iPads and things like that are something that they um, really get along well with because it's something that they have in their hand all the time, uh, whether it's their phone or yeah. iPad. So I think uh, being able to collect these numbers are going to be something that's great to look back on and understand time of year and things like that because things are going to look a little bit different going this upcoming year. But luckily, we've been able to save things to the cloud and now we can look back at it and it will help us do our job at the highest level. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So 
when like say you get a freshman in uh what sort of profiling do you take them through like just to sort of gauge where they're at and see what they need to work on does the gym aware or any other pieces of technology obviously help you with that yeah i think uh one thing with the gym aware is like first we're going to work on just like work capacity and doing some different isometric holds and things like that so we won't throw them into the gym aware right away um it's kind of something that's earned for us because we'll do like different range of motion testing like we touched on, like uh, getting on the force plates, doing jumps there, and then we can get an idea from a force velocity profiling of where they're at, what they need to work on, um, and we can bucket it from there. And then later on, once we get through like our ground zero program, um, doing different isometrics, eccentrics, um, then we can kind of dive into the specialized strength down the road. Um, but it's not something we don't throw them into right away. Um, we really like our kids to earn it um, and understand like where they're at from a movement competen competency standpoint of like where you're at through space and things like that. So we don't want them driving from the wrong um, place or, or muscle group just to achieve a speed, right? Because they're all extremely competitive in the fact mm -hmm. that you're getting a number back every single time. Um, but once we get through like a one training cycle or get through the fall, um, utilizing that one RM to hit certain thresholds um, helps us project that number, especially with track and field, because they're always, the, the track coach is always going to be testing, right? Testing, 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 and acquiring some numbers. Um, we'll try to do it in a safe manner by doing different thresholds for the student athlete and then using that, the profiling going back online and, and using the force velocity curve to figure out where their 1RM is. Luckily, we can compute that through the online-based system. Yeah, for sure. So you've touched on um, a ton of stuff that Jimmy Ware can do. Um, what would be, in your opinion, the most impactful feature or your most used feature, do you think? If, if there is just one, like working with all these different athletes and I guess ages as well, but yeah, if, if there was one, what would it be? Oh man. I think of course, like setting the target velocities yeah. uh, uh, to utilize within, within training and have that um, motor ability and adaptation that we're looking for that time of year. But of course that's just like, something of course you could use on a tendo too but the gym aware i really enjoy the leaderboard i think um for us as strength coaches we're dealing with high level athletes that um are extremely competitive you know and in the weight room uh they're lifting all year round right they're lifting four days a week three days a week depending on time of year and and having the gym aware to help drive intent because that's one of our core values of the the weight room is train with train and compete with intent and purpose. The, the gym aware enables us to push that culture forward um, because every rep is recorded. And I think they really understand like, all right, whenever we're putting in different weights for different sets and reps, like it pops up on the TV and it'll correlate for body weight. Like, so they understand like the high intent and being engaged in the training session of changing those weights inside and out because they know we're gonna be sending some of these reports over to the sport coaches after the lift. So if you wanna move up on the leaderboard during the training session and this, that, and the other, you gotta make sure that you're highly focused and, and changing um, not only the, the weights, but um, actually when you're driving in the set. So I have to say the leaderboard, because we found a way, we just hook up like my computer, the two different TVs, and it's constantly giving you instant feedback on the TVs. So I think like with college athletics, of course we have 20 hours and we're in season, especially with like softball and baseball, you're playing how many games. So finding a way to get them to compete in the weight room and using that leaderboard is, is awesome. But there's so many other great features too. Um, I think I already touched on the reports, but uh, I think just the testing and, and some of the metrics that you can get, like looking at how it provides loads at which max power is produced has been a, a huge piece that we've used with some of like the relative strength sports like track and field um, in particular. And I touch on track so much because I worked with them for such a long period of time and everything is measured by numbers, whether it's the vent on the track or the numbers that you're producing in the weight room. So. I think the gym aware really helps ties those two pieces together. Yeah. Um, I know you touched upon like how you sort of learned BBT and, you know, the Brian Mans and Laddens. Um, when you get a new athlete or, you know, a new set of students in, um, uh, sorry, a new, you know, maybe a new coach or something. What, what's the sort of um, process there about educating them? Maybe if they haven't used the gym aware system, um, who sort of teaches them that? Is it, do you have interns that do that? Or is it, you know, obviously how, how do you go about sort of educating people on not only VBT, but the gym aware system as well? Yeah. So actually what we did this past semester, um, we did a applied sports science open house. So what we did, and this was for all the sport coaches, I'm a new director at the school. So um, 
we've acquired all these different pieces of technology, but in particular with the gym where um, we brought them in and we just did, it was like very informal. So we wanted them to feel comfortable coming into the, the training facility. So we had like coffee and we opened up like three different days with four different open times to come in and just see all the equipment that we have and have acquired and how we're uh, looking at performance and measuring readiness from a daily basis and things like that. So we let them come in and like just mess around on the iPad and we took them through all the different pieces of technology, why we use it. And in particular the gym aware we like fired it up, set it all up. And then we were going through just like sets and reps and showing how it records. Um, and then just showing it all the abilities that it can do, you know, and we literally mm -hmm. passed around the iPads to all the different coaches so they could just mess with the app, you know, look through it, see their kids on there, see their pictures, see all the movements that we can do. And even like some coaches, like, in particular, softball or pitching coaches, like, I'd love to take this outside and start to do some measurements. I'm like, well, I love that, but let's, let's not take it too far outside. Or if it's, it's really humid in Mississippi, so I don't know about that. Oh, but, uh, yeah, it's gotten to the point that they're like, man, what else can we do with this piece of equipment? So I think that <laughs> that shows how great of a product it is if, if sport coaches wanted to take it out to practice, whether it's jumping I'll with it. The or around the bicycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wrap it around a belt and, and doing a movement but yeah we did the applied sports science open house and I think that was really beneficial because it was like a very relaxed environment it wasn't high stress it was like hey come in see our environment see what we do um and have a cup of coffee you know giving giving food or a drink is always a positive yeah. we'll draw I feel like more, more you know um, colleges should do that for sure yeah so that that was awesome when it came to just like I think it's so important to make sure you introduce all these different pieces of equipment to the sport coaches, because rightfully so, they should know what you're utilizing with their student athletes, mm -hmm. um, more or less our student athletes. But uh, working on the front end and being proactive is key. And I think like that's one of the things I know when we bring recruits in, they're like, wow, this is, this is high level in the sense of just like they're measuring like the speed of every pitch or measuring the speed of every rep. Um, so I think it really allows them to understand that we're, we're doing everything we can in the weight room to find ways to measure movements and, and get the most out of them because we do have four years of development with their, whether it's their kids when they come in for a recruiting visit and things like that. So I think they really respect our craft that much more knowing that we're collecting all the data and, and making adjustments, especially when you're in season with different velocities that you're setting for your work sets and you're adjusting from set to set to make sure that they're recovering between weekends. Uh, of play I think is so important because you may have a freshman athlete that's starting and then a senior athlete that's starting but how they're adapting to playing games on the weekend is going to be completely different from a training age standpoint so the gym aware allows you to make those adjustments on um, whether people can add weight or subtract weight you know by looking at the velocities that they're achieving. Mm. So it's sort of uh, related how much do the athletes the students know about their numbers how much do they or how much do you need them to know about their numbers? in terms of velocity. When yeah, so what we usually do um, is just, uh, we lay out like the training phases and the intent behind the training phase. So like if it's a power phase, we'll put the speed threshold on there and then we tell them like, all right, hey, we're gonna go from this phase to more of a speed strength phase and then like an absolute speed phase. And we talk about like the velocities that we're gonna use because I think kids nowadays all wanna know why, right? Mm -hmm. So why are we doing this? Where are we going? What's the end product? And I think, Gym Aware has even allowed us to, to create a little more buy-in with the student athletes of them understanding what the training blocks look like um, and, and what the intent behind the training block is. So like those three or four weeks you're in the training block, like they're really getting after it because they know that like what they do within that training block is going to bleed into the next, you know? So understanding and telling them like how the velocities are going to improve because this is, they're always asking questions they want to know, which I think it's it's really intelligent to, of course, explain things to them. Um, it's not because they're they're questioning your program. They just really are curious, you know, because a lot of the kids coming up, they want to know why they're doing things. They want to make sure they're getting the most out of it. And I think it helps create that much more buy-in and training. And um, they they take ownership and really enjoy it. So I, I think they, they, half the time, they know how to use the iPad better than me. <laughs> I'm like, all right, how do I turn the screen brightness up? We've updated this iPad and I can't remember. <laughs> And they're in there just uh, manipulating it with everything else. But I think uh, anything with an app and everything else, like they're always on something with blue light, you know, whether it's a mm -hmm. computer, whether it's a phone or an iPad. So I think that's the one great thing about Gym Aware is like you get on the iPad and that's just something that's easy and normal to them. You got to teach it like off the rip when we added it, it's like, all right, everyone come around the iPad. I'm going to go over this with you guys. Like these mm -hmm. are the different things that you hit. And luckily we do have a lot of interns. So like, at the beginning, like the first couple of weeks when we're utilizing, there's gonna be little things that you just gotta like help them through, you know. But like after that, we're a very uh, player-led, not coach-fed um, 
athletic facility, I would say, in the weight room. So, like, we really want them to take ownership of understanding how to do it. And, and sometimes they even have upperclassmen go teach the freshmen. Um, like, hey, if you say you know that, somebody else, you know, that shows that you understand it at a high level. And I think that's the one great thing is it's, it's easily uh, utilized for sure. Hmm. So just with the, like, are there zones that you sort of tend to live in throughout the season? Or is it, it's obviously going to vary depending on what sport or what athletes you're looking at, you know, age level. Um, but are there sort of zones that you, you know, like 0.9 to 0.7 or um, do you use the squad zones or is it, is it more uh, the blue zone, the specific uh, zones for each athlete? Yeah, I'd say it's definitely a, a tough question to answer in a sense of, um, like, depending on the sport and the time of year, and then also the, the student athlete and what their abilities are. Um, so, like, a short sprinter, um, extremely fast twitch muscle fibers versus um, one of my soccer girls that has just been always aerobic in nature and, and ran cross country. Her ability to hit some of these higher thresholds may not be realistic. Um, so, like, with track and field, they're kind of like the absolute, you know, like track and field used to be called athletics back in the day. Like that's where everything began. Um, so I think when it comes to like what we've been trying to do is just create developmental tiers and different benchmarks for the student athletes to hit um, relative to what's on the bar to their body weight. So we can slowly shift to different movements along the way. And then just making sure they understand the focus behind each phase um, and the speeds that go along with the phase. So whether it's like I said the relative strength phase, the power phase, speed strength, and then like some type of fascial strength, um, and then helping them understand making it relative to body weight. And I think like the mean watts per body weight is really beneficial of talking to the kids, student athletes about. Um, and it's a way that I'm not like flashing their body weight in front of them all the time because that's not healthy at all. Um, but them understanding like force output and things and power output and comparing themselves to one another in that sense, like, and looking at exit below off the bat, for example, with softball or baseball, like all those numbers make sense and they're constantly getting numbers thrown at them all the time. So like in the weight room, it's something that they just understand already at a high level because they see it on the, on the field. So I think it's kind of a tough question to answer. Um, but like, for example, with power cleans with like, track and volleyball, um, getting an idea of like what can be achieved for that student athlete, depending on height, yeah. um, and absolutes throughout the year. Um, and we know what they've achieved before in the past. Cause we always compare like, let's say, um, February this year versus February last year, where were you at? And looking back at some of those numbers and, and seeing what you have on the barbell. Um, cause some of the testing we'll do is like I've done in the past with track and field is like right before, um, indoor conference let's say you put the females would put like their body weight on the bar and then they try to move it as fast as they can with the gym wear and then the males would put 1.25 their times their body weight on the bar and then try to move it as fast as they can so being able to look back at those numbers and create thresholds and understanding like where we're at um, and if you are putting on weight like of course mass gotta move mass so if you're putting on weight you better be able to move it and carry <laughs> it at level so I think uh, it's been able to create a, a healthy environment when it comes to understanding some of those thought processes for sure yeah do you have any other questions well i think you've pretty much answered everything that we've thrown at you i think so yeah that was um yeah well no thanks for taking out the time anyway that's um yeah it's been really insightful uh just kind of see how you use gym aware and you know we've been, we know that you've been a fan for a long time so yeah it's just good to see you know and share some of your ideas around you know the different training you do so yeah thanks thanks for that appreciate it will of course of course it was up to par yeah, oh, no, no, really good. <laughs> yeah. appreciate it all awesome. right well, um, yeah we'll be in touch anyway sounds yeah. great yeah. guys be safe be safe thanks thanks Stephanie. crazy right. times yeah. all right bye guys yeah